So members of the Ericaceae, the heather family, are kind of companionable creatures. There's a nice game you can play if you go walking in the mountains around here and see how many different um, members of the Ericaceae you can find within one small area. It doesn't take very long before you'll find several species of vaccinium, blueberries, uh, Empetrum nigrum, uh, Erica tetralix of course, and uh, the common heather, heather Coluna vulgaris, all growing right together. And um, you can play this same game down in the, the Cape Floristic region of South Africa, but there the stakes get a bit higher. The, uh, the competition becomes quite fierce because although you can only find the genus Erica in the Cape, there are 700 species of them down there. And uh, you can find a couple of dozen of them easily within walking distance. Funnily enough though, what you don't tend to see is hybrids between species. These are particularly rare. There are exceptions, however, to this rule, as there always are in biology, there are always exceptions. And we've got some of them on display here. We have some hybrids between European Erica species. And as ever, it is the exceptions to the rule which really tell you something about the, the rule itself and uh, we can take a look at some of these hybrids and think about the conditions under which they occurred and what this tells us about uh, why species remain distinct or why they don't in the wild. Here we have Erica ex daliensis, which is a cross between Erica carnea and Erica erigena. Now these species are very closely related, but they don't occur anywhere near each other. They have no chance to hybridise in the wild, but when they are brought together, they can be hybridised readily to produce this um, effectively cultivar. This is Erica ex Williamsii, which is a, a cross between Erica tetralix and Erica vagans. And it's not in flower right now. What you can see here, the little patches of light colour, are these discoloured leaf tips, which are a, a, a kind of general indication of uh, hybrids in European ericas. Now these species, te Erica tetralix and Erica vagans, they coexist in the wild. Um, we can see them in the same place, for example, in the, the uh, southwest of England, in Cornwall. But they don't generally hybridise. These hybrids is, are extremely rare. And finally, we have Erica ex Oldenburgensis. This is another hybrid of Erica carnea, but this time with a totally different species, Erica arborea. And if you've seen Erica carnea growing here, you'll know that it grows very low to the ground. Arborea, by, as you might expect by its name, is a more tree-formed uh, uh, Erica. It can grow up to 12 metres high. And um, this hybrid, then, is a, a much more upright form but with flowers that are still very similar to Erica carnea. What we see is there's rather little hybridization that is crossing between species that naturally co-occur. But when you bring species together that have very different distributions, then they can often be crossed, at least in, within, between species of European Erica. There are different reasons for this potentially very interesting ones. But the bottom line is that between species that, that coexist, there are clearly barriers have been built up somewhere between the point of um, flowering time, uh, successful transfer of pollen, to the development of seeds or develop, and the development of uh, fertile plants, which actively prevents hybridization between species. And this can give us a clue to the origins of new species themselves. Um, but this is a theme that we will return to another time. <laughs>